Paul Tano and members of the committee. Um, all small and rural communities in all of the states are very appreciative for the invitation to testify today about small community wastewater issues, the Clean Water Act, and water infrastructure financing. I am John Moxiski. I am the water superintendent for the town of Greenport. It's a small municipality in a rural New York on the Hudson River located in the 19th Congressional District. We have a population of just over 4,000 people and an annual budget of $5.3 million, which includes the operating budgets for both the town's water and sewer utilities. I want to thank our representative, Congressman Delgado, for his continued attention and help to all the municipalities in New York's 19th District with environmental protection and economic development. I would also like to thank you, Chairwoman Napolitano and Representative Young and Kate Coe for introducing the Water Quality Protection and Job Creation Act of 2019 today. Your legislation is very welcome, especially the provisions to increase funding for the Clean Water State Revolving Fund. My community and many is just like it would not be operating today without the water infrastructure assistance from the state revolving funds. I am testifying today on behalf of all the approximately 12,000 small and rural communities in all states that operate public wastewater utilities through my affiliation with the National Rural Water Association and the New York Rural Water Association. About 85% of the approximately 15,000 public wastewater utilities in the U.S. are in small or rural communities. We have a much more challenging time complying with our Federal Clean Water Act permits and operating complex wastewater treatment systems due to the lack of technical resources in small communities. While the cost of a small community's water infrastructure may only be a fraction of a larger metropolitan community, the cost per household is often much higher because we have so few ratepayers to spread out the cost. Currently, our town is under a Clean Water Act enforcement order and struggling to pay for the needed sewer improvements. Our initial sewer system was installed in the 1930s with clay sewer pipe. This pipe cracks easily, which allows rainwater to flow into the collection system. Back in 2007, we were under a Clean Water Act consent order for violating our sewer permit. Every time we experienced a heavy rain, all the extra water overwhelmed the treatment plant and resulted in rainwater and sewage discharging to the Claverack Creek, which drains to the Hudson River. Fixing this situation was estimated cost the to town upwards of $10 million to build a new and larger treatment plant. This occurred around the same time that Congress passed the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009. We received a $9.5 million funding package, which was half for loan forgiveness and half zero interest loan, which we are still repaying. The newer sewer plant allowed us to comply with our consent order. However, we still had all the clay pipes in the ground draining all the excess water during heavy rain events. Um, for our drinking water utility, we need to replace the antiquated cast iron water lines that were installed in the 1930s. These lines are frequently breaking, causing civic and economic disruption. Before we started to replace the cast iron pipes in 2006, we were experiencing up to 50 line breaks a year, which is affecting just about everyone in our community. Over the past 15 years, we've replaced about 40% of our old cast iron lines with $5.8 million in financing. In 2014, we were pressured to sign another Clean Water Act enforcement order for sanitary sewer overflows. The failing clay sewer pipes were not overwhelming the sewer plant anymore, but it was causing the sewage water to back up into people's homes. We have taken a number of steps to comply with our current consent order, and so far we have prevented any reoccurrence of the sewage backups into anyone's home. However, we are still operating under the consent order, which may require the lining of additional sections of our faulty clay sewer pipes. It is likely to cost another $4.5 million, and most of the community currently thinks they are maxed out on their ability to pay. Raising rates at this time could actually threaten the political stability of the community. As the committee considers modifications to the SRFs, we urge you to target the federal funding within the SRFs to the communities and citizens most in need of the federal subsidies. This evaluation should be made on a per capita analysis that is sensitive to local economic conditions. In closing, I would like to thank this committee, which is very important to rural and small town America. Every federal dollar that has been granted to the many thousands of small towns to build, expand, and maintain their wastewater infrastructure through the State Revolvings Fund was authorized by this committee. We are grateful to be able to testify today and grateful for the numerous opportunities this committee has provided rural America to testify and be included in the crafting of federal water environmental legislation. Thank you.